Hey, how's it going everyone? I'm Nathan from the eBook Reader blog. For this video, I'm gonna talk about the differences between the entry-level Kindle on the left and the new 6.8 inch Kindle Paperwhite on the right. When it comes to the software, there's not a whole lot of differences between these two devices. They got a lot of the same features. Uh, a lot of it comes down to the hardware differences. So uh, main difference is with the front light, of course, obviously. Uh, so the new Paperwhite, it adds the option for a warm colored front light. Uh, the Entry-level Kindle, it's available in white or black. Uh, the Paperwhite's currently only available in black. So the Paperwhite, it's waterproof. It has this flush front screen. Uh, the entry-level Kindle, it just has the uh, indented screen. It has that smaller 6-inch ink screen with 167 PPI. Paperwhite has 300 PPI, so text is a lot clearer. Uh, one thing with the Paperwhite, though, with that flush front screen, as you can see right here, it is more reflective. You can see like the reflection of the light more clearly. It's more diffused on the entry-level Kindle's indented screen. So that's one of the differences with the screen. Uh, but again, the Paperwhite has a clearer screen with the higher resolution. Along the bottom edge, you can see they have different USB ports as well. The older Kindle has the micro USB port. The new Paperwhite has USB-C. So obviously the entry-level Kindle is quite a bit smaller and lighter. It weighs about 30 grams less than the Paperwhite. Uh, it takes up a little bit less space, a little easier to fit in a pocket. On the back, the entry-level Kindle is just kind of like a cheap plastic, whereas the Paperwhite has this uh, rubbery coating. Uh, both devices come with 8 gigabytes of storage, although the Paperwhite has the option for 32 gigabytes with the Signature Edition. Signature Edition also adds an auto brightness sensor for this, and it has wireless charging. So one of the main differences, as you can see here, between the entry-level Kindle and the Kindle Paperwhite is the option for the warm front light. So you can blend the two colors together, uh, or you can just go straight orange like it's showing here. Um, so, I mean, the entry-level Kindle, it just has that one color. Um, it's got four LEDs. The Paperwhite has 17 LEDs, so the coverage is a little bit more even on the Paperwhite as well, though it's quite good on the entry-level Kindle. It's just that you might notice a little bit of a shadowy, brighter spot along the very bottom of the screen where the LEDs are located. Here's a quick look at the front lights turned off on both of these devices. Again, the Paperwhite has the higher resolution 300 PPI screen, so text is a bit clearer, sharper. But I mean, text is still easily readable on the entry-level Kindle. It kind of depends on what font sizes you use. Lower font sizes can be less clear. Uh, another difference with the Paperwhite is they have the option for dark mode. So you can use the white text with a black background. For whatever reason, they never had that available on the entry-level model. So uh, yeah, the Paperwhite, the previous Paperwhite had that as well, and so does the Oasis, but the entry-level model does not. So when it comes to the software, these devices are virtually identical, like all Kindles newer ones they run the same software they almost have all the same software features as you can see here same home screen same library view the one thing with the entry level kindles i noticed the touch screen isn't as responsive have to touch the screen multiple times on occasions you'll notice it in the video but as far as software features go i mean they're pretty much identical like i said you just have the dark mode on the paper white it also has this new uh, screen refresh uh, animation setting so like it has this like subtle refresh when you're turning pages uh, that's not available on the older models um, as you can see here, um, and it also has uh, the paper white also has the option to disable the touch screen so to avoid accidental presses that is not available on the entry level model. Again, the touch screen it just takes a couple presses sometimes. I don't usually have this problem very often, it just seems like when I'm shooting a video, I don't know if things go weird sometimes, but I mean, for the most part, I've never really had any issues with the with it responding under normal circumstances, but. Um, yeah, sometimes it does do that. I noted that in my very first initial review in 2019. Sometimes the touchscreen doesn't respond the first time you touch it. But anyway, you know, uh, overall performance, it's a little bit better on the Paperwhite. Uh, it's a little bit zippier. Uh, page turns a little bit smoother. But for the most part, uh, there's not a big difference. The lower resolution screen is not as taxing on the processor. So the entry-level Kindle has always been a little bit zippier than the higher, uh, you know, the older Paperwhite. But uh Comparing it to the new one, you know, it's not a whole lot of difference, but uh, the new Paperwhite is a bit zippier at times. The screen refresh is better. It's got like a, the new screen, it's got a little bit deeper contrast and it's got, I don't know, the refresh is better. There's like virtually no ghosting on the uh, new Paperwhite. So that's definitely a plus. But like I said, most of the software features are the same on both these devices. You can get the same Kindle reading features for a lot less on the entry level Kindle. Uh, you just got a couple of differences. Like I said, you can disable the touchscreen on this one for everything. You got page swipes, kind of a helps with the uh, flush front screen. If your thumb's kind of rubbing the edge or something, you can avoid the accidental presses. That's not available on the entry-level Kindle. For some reason, they never have that option available for it. But, you know, all the other software features are pretty much the same. Outside of dark mode, uh, you still have the same, you know, dictionary options, same exact font choices, same exact layout options. So, like, uh, the 
new end model, like I said, does have that new page turn animation setting. So if you scroll down here, you got the page turn animation. You can turn that on or off if you don't want it on. Um, and then it just kind of has that subtle refresh where it goes from left to right when you're turning the page. It kind of helps the screen look a little bit better. Um, and you can turn it off. So I have it turned off right now. So it's just going to be like the entry level Kindle. Uh, here's a look at a comic on both these devices. Obviously, with the larger screen, it's going to be a little bit better on the paper white. Pinch zooming, you know, responsiveness is similar. You can scroll around the screen. You can also double tap on most comics and it'll enter that uh, panel view or it goes from, you know, one section to the next instead of viewing the full page all at once. But, you know, obviously the larger screen with the higher resolution, it's going to be easier to read on the paper white than it is the old school Kindle. Page refreshing is definitely a bit smoother on the paper white. Doesn't have that kind of delayed flash going on. And if you have the animation setting on, it's a little bit uh, clearer as well. So here's that panel view I was talking about. You can go panel by panel on Kindles as well, instead of just viewing the full page at once. So that does kind of help with the smaller screen size, being able to read the text balloons and whatnot. But, you know, not a huge difference in screen size, but I mean, just the higher resolution on the Paperwhite does uh, help for reading smaller text like this. So that's one thing to consider. All right, so that's kind of a look at the main differences between the Kindle Paperwhite and the entry-level Kindle. Obviously, the screen's the biggest thing and the front light, things like dark mode. Um, and then you've also got dual-band Wi-Fi support on the new Paperwhite. Battery life is much longer on the new Paperwhite, up to 10 weeks, where it's only four weeks on the regular Kindle. So uh, new Paperwhite weighs about 30 grams more than the Kindle. Not a huge difference, but it kind of just depends on how much you want to spend, what features you need. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video right here. Check out the main reviews for more info. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.